Hey, what's up and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to cover some ultimate SEO tips for beginners to rank number one in 2022. And the aim of this video is to give you a good overview of SEO and the main things you need to do to get it right. If you focus on these things, you should be able to get some pretty good results of SEO even if you're a complete beginner. Of course, some of the things we're going to cover in this video such as the tactics in section two might even help out some of the pros. Anyhow, stick around and make sure you watch to the end or else you might just miss that one tip that could take your SEO campaigns to the next level. Let's get started. So tip number one is that you'll get nowhere without content. Content, content, content. No matter what marketing tactic you're looking at, it seems as though content is a little bit of a buzzword. But when it comes to SEO, there are no exceptions because content really is one of the most important things you should focus on. In fact, you often hear people say that content is king and it's kind of true. By the way, you might be wondering who the queen is and that's something we're about to cover. But why do people say that? Well, look, here's the thing. You can probably get your website to around 1,000 visitors per month, heck even more, if you just focus on producing the right kind of content. However, if you just build backlinks to a site that has no content, you may not hit those numbers. Even if you focus on the other aspects of SEO, such as user experience, a big topic we're going to touch on later, you still won't hit those kinds of numbers. Everything else is like fuel on the fire, but the actual fire is content and also something else we're about to cover. And if you want to succeed with SEO, you need to make sure that you've got high quality content. And that is why content is so important. Okay, so that's all fair enough. But then how do you make sure you've got good content? What's the secret source here? Well, there actually isn't really much of a secret. And for the most part, it all comes down to outshining the competition. So imagine you want to rank for a really, really, really exciting term, such as how to build a shed. Some people love sheds, what can I say? If you want to do that, you would probably need to look at the top three results of this term and see what the content looks like. You would then need to ask yourself, how can you make a better version of what already exists? Most of the time, you can do this by creating something that's more in depth or even just something that's easier to read and understand. Anyhow, if you use that sort of approach when creating content, you should naturally end up creating some amazing content that's very worthy of a high ranking. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to hit the like button and maybe also consider being a subscriber. Thanks. Tip number two is that you pretty much can't rank without backlinks. Right, so we just talked about the importance of creating content and how your website won't get that far without good content. Obviously, there's no getting around this, but here's the thing you need to remember. Content can only really do so much for your website when it comes to SEO, and it does have limits. That's because if you really want to get this content in front of a lot of people, you're going to need backlinks. And so if we use the analogy from earlier, backlinks are kind of the queen if content is considered the king. Okay, but why is that? Well, backlinks show you that your site has some level of authority. After all, if your site or content is good, people are going to link to you because your content is a good resource. These links will then show to Google that your content is trustworthy and therefore deserving of a high ranking. All of which is just a long way of saying Google will rank your content high and put it in front of a lot of people if your site has lots of good links. Now, there are dozens upon dozens of link building methods you could use. So we won't focus on everything here. But what we will cover though, are a few general things you need to keep in mind when building backlinks. First off, you should only really build high quality links, okay? These are essentially links that attract and build authority naturally. If you want some tips on how you can build these kind of links, you should check out our video, eight powerful SEO link building strategies for 2022. These tactics work really well in 2022, so check them out if you want some strategies that will work this year too. You also want to make sure you're building high authority links. These kind of links can sometimes be a little bit harder to secure, but it's worth it because these links will produce bigger improvements in your rankings when compared to low authority links. Now, I know that might sound a little bit obvious, but a lot of people, especially SEO beginners, don't appreciate just how big the difference can be here. To help drive this point home, here's an example from one of our clients. This chart is crazy. And I mean, if you look at the dates, you can see how quickly this site hit huge traffic levels. Now, did content make this happen? Sure, of course, content was important. And we talked about that earlier, but content can only do so much. 
What really moved the needle here was getting backlinks from high authority sites like Forbes. Without these kind of links, there's really no way they'd have been able to achieve this crazy, crazy growth. By the way, if you'd like us to help you achieve results like this, consider booking in a free consultation call with us at juliangoldie.com. Tip number three, please, please, please don't ignore user experience. User experience, also known as UX, is a super important concept in SEO. In fact, recently, kind of like the past few years, user experience has jumped up a few notches in the level of importance it commands in SEO. That's because Google is now really starting to care about it. And they're even penalizing sites that don't have the same view as them. Here's their statement on the matter. Now, Google being Google, this statement is a little bit complicated to read and it feels a little bit like fluffy corporate talk. But one of the main things they're basically saying here is if the results for a certain keyword are similar, the site with the best user experience will likely have better rankings. After all, think about how bad it looks on Google if someone uses their platform, finds a result that looks good, clicks on it, and then has a horrible time using the site. They're going to be frustrated and some of that frustration is going to be pointed directly at Google. These people might then use a competitor and if enough people do this, it's going to hurt Google long term. So of course, Google doesn't want this. And so they're prioritizing sites that have great user experience. All right, so with that said, what really matters when it comes to this? Well, if you check out this graphic, you can see the user experience factors that Google really values. There are essentially four key sections here, but it's all a little bit complicated. To make things clearer, let's just quickly go over each one. So number one, the first section focuses on core web vitals. This sounds complicated, but this concept basically relates to things like the speed of your site and just the overall stability of it. If you want to see how your site performs in this area, go to Google's Core Web Vitals report page. If you provide your URL here, this web page will produce a report based on your site. Now, something to keep in mind here is that this Core Web Vitals thing can be a little bit technical. Luckily though, Google has a ton of documentation on this that makes things a bit easier to digest. You can find that documentation here. If you just go over that, you'll be able to get your head around the technical parts of this concept. The second section focuses on having a mobile friendly site. The best way to check if your website is mobile friendly is by using the free test service provided by Google. This tool will give your site a once over and it will tell you if it's up to standard. It will also provide you with some tips if there are any issues with your mobile site. If your website isn't mobile friendly and you're using something like WordPress on your site, fixing this issue might just be as simple as getting a new mobile friendly theme. However, if you're not using WordPress, you might need to hire a web developer that can help you with this kind of thing. Or then again, you could just take the leap and move things over to WordPress. Now I know that I'm pushing WordPress a bit here, but let's face it, WordPress just makes things easier when it comes to SEO. Plus, if your site is on WordPress, you can actually install some plugins that will make it easy for you to optimize the user experience of your site, and it's free to use too. For example, there's one plugin that compresses images so that your site loads faster. By the way, if you know of any good plugins when it comes to SEO, or just even some general ones, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to learn about some new plugins. And number three focuses on HTTPS. HTTPS is basically just a security protocol and it's supposed to make sure traffic is encrypted. If you look at the URL section, when you visit a site, you'll often see a little padlock and this shows that a site is using HTTPS. Now, Google announced back in 2014 that they were using this as a ranking signal. And so, as shown in the earlier screenshot, they're still prioritizing this. If your site doesn't have this, you need to contact your hosting provider. They can give you something called a SSL certificate, and this will then make it so that your site has HTTPS. By the way, keep in mind that you need to renew these certificates. So it's not like a set it and forget it thing. Now, this is important to remember because if these certificates expire and you forget about them, it might hurt your rankings and undo some of your hard work. So make sure you create a reminder or something so that this doesn't happen again. The last section basically warns people about something called intrusive interstitials. Okay, so first off, you're probably wondering what on earth that means. Well, Google just wants to sound clever here, 
but this term basically just means no excessive pop-ups. So yeah, you might be allowed one to ask people about cookies and another one may be asking them to join your newsletter, but don't push it here. Plus, I mean, if you do push it, are you really doing yourself any favors? Like even if you figure out a way to get around Google's rules, when's the last time you enjoyed using a site that just bombarded you with pop-ups and ads? So we've covered a bunch of tips in this video that will help beginners rank in 2022. Now these tips are based on some of the fundamentals of SEO, so it's a good chance they'll be relevant for years to come. Now I know that sounds like I'm just congratulating myself and patting myself on the back for making a good video, but I promise it's true. Anyhow, thanks for watching guys, and please remember to like and subscribe. If you like our videos, it helps us reach more people. And in a world where good SEO knowledge is hard to find, I would say that helping us reach more people is one of the most important things you could do this month. There's no debate in it. Thanks for watching and please look out for future content.